In recent years, fugitive emissions from chemical plants have received increased attention. This has been driven by environmental and legislative pressure, by the desire to achieve cost saving and, in particular, by the introduction in the United States of legislation for the monitoring and the control of emissions. Chemical plant operators must comply with the legislation in the most cost-effective way. Many countries, including the UK, do not currently apply prescriptive legislation and instead use a goal-based approach, requiring operating companies to apply best available technology. Emissions of process chemicals can cause damage to the environment or harm the health of plant workers and the general public. Emissions also mean financial loss to the operating company. Design emissions are those that are known about at the design stage and designed into the process, like analyzer vents and purge steams. Fugitive emissions are not anticipated and can occur wherever there's a seal between the process fluid and the external environment. For instance, at flanged joints, valve glands and pump seals. They can be very small and often go unnoticed. But on plants with many thousands of similar sources, the impact of fugitive emissions can be extremely significant. Plants are required to estimate the total fugitive emissions of any type. Emission factors are published estimates of emissions from given source components based on data gathered from chemical plant assets. There are disadvantages. The factors were developed from experimental data from a number of plants, so they can't be specific to any one plant. They also don't allow leaking components to be identified and can't be used to target repair activity at component level. Concentration monitoring, or sniffing, forms the basis of most programs aimed at reducing emissions. It measures the concentration of the process fluid in the atmosphere close to the component being monitored. This simple technique is used as the basis for most leak detection and repair programs, and it's possible to monitor up to 200 components per day. It provides plant-specific data and allows individual leaking components to be identified and repaired. The measurement can be repeated after repair work to check it's been effective. However, the monitored emission concentrations are sensitive to weather conditions and the competence of the technician. The technique does not give a direct measurement of leak mass flow rate, which would have to be estimated by the use of published or developed correlations. It also requires an instrument capable of identifying the process fluid, like an organic vapor analyzer. These instruments are sensitive but can be unreliable and can saturate at high leak rates. Bagging requires that the leak source is contained or bagged. A carrier gas, usually nitrogen, is then passed through the bag at a known flow rate. The concentration of the process fluid in the carrier gas leaving the bag is measured, allowing the leak mass flow rate to be directly calculated. This measurement can be used to develop plant-specific correlation between concentration and leak mass flow rate, as well as the identification of leaking items and the effectiveness of repair work. However, this technique is expensive and time-consuming. Typically, bagging provides up to five sets of data per day and is not in widespread use other than to support the development of correlations.